An historic deal has just been announced at the COP28 climate conference in Dubai. It urges nations for the first time to transition away from fossil fuels blamed for global warming. Uh, but the New Deal doesn't obligate countries to phase them out altogether. Instead, it presents a series of eight options to reduce emissions and asks countries to, quote, contribute to the goal of net zero carbon emissions by 2050. While the agreement leaves open loopholes that will allow the continued use of coal, oil and gas, some climate experts say the this really does mark the beginning of the end of the fossil fuel era. Dave McKenzie joins us uh, for more reaction on the deal. And we can't underestimate how hard it was to get the words fossil fuels even into this announcement. Oh, that's right, Max. I mean, if you look at the draft that we saw yesterday about the attempt to get fossil fuels in there, it wasn't even in that draft uh, communique from the COP28 summit. So yes, this is certainly progress. Many uh, countries are lauding this deal, even activists saying that this shows a historic move away from fossil fuels in the near future to allow the world to combat the very worst impacts of the climate crisis. There are loopholes, and already people are pointing out that uh, calling for an option of carbon capture and unproven technology on a large scale uh, does present loopholes for countries that are still looking to exploit their fossil fuels. But, you know, just I'm looking at some of the key wording here, you know, accelerating towards the phase down of unabated coal power. That's a very significant move. Uh, the world has been addicted to coal for you know, hundreds of years now, and this will be potentially a very important meeting. The COP president, Sultan al Jaber, uh, said this was a historic moment. We have delivered a comprehensive response to the global stock take and all other mandates. Together, we have confronted realities and we have set the world in the right di direction. We have given it a robust action plan to keep 1.5 within reach. Well, the key will be implementing this plan. And because it doesn't dictate that countries need to phase out fossil fuels, there will still be a lot of horse trading, I think, in the future. Uh, Max? What do you think um, one round those holdouts, uh, countries like Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Iraq, Well, I think it was an enormous amount of pressure coming from many nations. More than 100 nations uh, were wanting to have more direct language in there. Now, that includes uh, fossil fuel giants like the U.S. and uh, the European Union uh, block of nations, uh, but also countries uh, in the Pacific Islands that are facing the worst ravages of the climate crisis. I think both the moral authority and the pressure coming uh, from the United Nations and other, others would have uh, pulled this over the line. But it is typical in these kind of negotiations uh, to move towards one extreme and then kind of meet somewhere in the middle. Uh, this is a consensus approach by nearly 200 nations of the, the Earth. And uh, I, again, it's worth stressing that what actually happens now is that countries actually have to put their money where their mouth is and make this transition happen in the next 10 to 20 years. Max?